This is what we're making, a bold claw setting with a pierced back and a pinch bail. For this setting we're going to use square wire. We're going to draw 1.2 millimeter round wire down to one millimeter square. So just file a taper on the end of your wire and pull it through your square draw plate. We're going to use one millimeter thick sheet for our base. So we're going to use a cabochon for this, which means flat bottom, rounded top. Uh, when you pick your stone, place it on the metal, scribe a line around it. Now, for an oval stone, you're going to need four prongs placed so that the stone can't turn. If it were a round stone, you could get away with three claws. This charoite, the way it's cut, you would need at least four claws you could do it two here and two on the opposing corner, but it would be difficult to place just four around the stone so that it was equally spaced and, and held the stone. Uh, you, you could even use one in the middle on either end and then four placed here. What you need to do is just do the physics, figure out how to keep the stone from turning. And like I say, once you get your stone, hold it firmly on your piece of metal and scribe a line around the outside. If you want to make absolutely sure that your stone doesn't move, you can either put double sticky tape under it or you can put a little spot of epoxy under it until you get it marked out. I quite like the double-sided tape. It's uh, easy to use, not permanent. So here we've got our mark. Now we're going to use our dividers, straight edge. We're going to mark the center on either end, scribe a line, then we're going to figure where our claw needs to go. Don't actually need to scribe a line. So we set the dividers where we think the claw needs to go. Put it a little mark. Shift this around, mark the other side. Do the same thing on the other end. That way your claws will be symmetrical and aesthetically pleasing. So remove your tape and at each spot where you have your mark, on the outside of your line, put a little punch mark because we're going to drill at those four spots. Now leave about half a mil on the outside of the line, otherwise your claw will be in too close to the stone. Remember your claw is a millimeter thick. So you can see where the marks are. Now drill through with a one millimeter drill bit. If you're unsure of your drill size, measure with your calipers down on this little shoulder just off this little shoulder where there are no flukes and it, it will tell you the size. If you always lubricate your drill it'll last a little bit longer. I just use beeswax. Rest the point 
in your little depression from your punch. Spin it up and a little bit of pressure and it should go that quickly. Do all four. Now when you've drilled your holes, the hole should be right on the line. Yeah. Now we're going to drill through with a 1.2 drill bit because it's the old putting the square peg in the round hole. Uh, even though this measures one mil, if you measure across the points, it's actually 1.2 mil. So use your parallel jaw pliers. And the good thing about the parallel jaw pliers is you can just run your wire straight down in. You can hold the full length of the wire and we'll, we'll put our wire in and remember to keep the flat part of the wire towards where the stone is going to be. So once you get the wire in, then we'll cut it for length and we want it three millimeters taller than our stone with it sitting on here. Yeah. So we want the wire to come right through and we want the flat part facing the stone. And we want this three millimeters above the top of the stone. So if I put my cutters even level with the stone and then just look at it, I can shift it up three mil because there's a small mark on there. So do all four of these, this height, and then we'll solder this on the bottom. Now I just brace the metal against my bench peg and push, wiggle, watch the back side, and when the metal comes through this amount, and I make sure that I have it turned so that it's flat against the stone, that's it. And it's a nice tight fit, so we can actually hold this completely upside down in the third hand to solder these and they won't fall out.